Hi everyone and welcome to Rob Evans 365. It's day number 368 and today I wanted to talk to you about mindset and the power of mindset when it comes to your workouts. Now I've been working out for over 30 years now and I can tell you that I personally go through various stages where I have a, a weak mindset, strong mindset, focused mindset and anywhere in between and what I see happen mostly in the gym is people coming into the gym um, I'm not talking about clients here but say the gym that I train, trained at uh, this morning and they're just turning up and it just makes you think you know why are you bothering now you could say well at least they're doing better than if they were doing nothing and staying at home and that may be true but that's a, a little bit to me like saying, well, at least they're breathing and they're still going through life, walking around the plant, you know, walking around the streets. I think that we don't dig deep enough. We're not focused enough as humans and we need to do better than what we do, especially when it's coming to our workouts. Now, this is part of the reason why we have such a, an incredible... Uh, problem in our country um, and around the world in terms of obesity. I spoke about it a couple of days ago. So I want to relate my personal experience today in today's workout. Now, I find that, well, I've found that the last few weeks where everything that's going on with my shoulder and again today, um, I was demonstrating last night uh, to a client what uh, box jumps are and I did a few up, oh, what is it, 75 centimetres up under the high box. And of course, in order to do that, you've got to squat down and you've got to use your arms and everything to help uh, generate that momentum. So of course, I hurt my shoulder doing that, didn't I? I was like, oh, you fool. Why did you... I was just thinking legs. I wasn't thinking about uh, arms and shoulders at the time when I did it. And uh, so today it is, uh, it's sorer than it was yesterday. So I didn't help myself. Um, but uh, with all of those things that have been going on, the pain getting worse, uh, you know, it can definitely push you off course in terms of mindset, focus, goal. As you know, my main goal has been Road to 600. And not being able to do that has meant that my workouts have not been as good as they could otherwise have been because I've, I've kind of just been waiting for it to get better and uh, you know, kind of working around uh, the, uh, the program that I was doing for Road to 600. Now, obviously, I've realized that that um, is not going to be something that's in the short term for me, it's going to be a longer or medium to longer term solution to fix my shoulder. So I've got to come up with an alternative. And I was talking to a client uh, last night, actually the same one that I was doing the box jumps with and explaining that he was asking me like, how's the shoulder? And uh, I was talking to him about it. And as I'm talking, I came up with this idea. So he said, what are you going to do with the, you know, your road to 600? And as he said it, I said, oh, you know what? I could make it road to 300. Uh, in worst case, if I can't do anything with chest and, and deadlift and everything because I can still use my legs. So maybe I make it road to 300 and I focus on at least my legs and then another program, which is largely going to be abdominal base, uh, I, can, I can do at the same time, well, cardio and uh, abdominal. And I thought, actually, do you know what? That would work really well. So then I could really focus on building up my leg strength and I'd be working on you know, this specific goal of the, of the 300 still, even though it's not the 600. Now, so what have I done there? All I've done is said that, well, I'm going to do one third of the road to 600 in terms of the, the three exercises that I was doing. And I've just taken the other two away. But what it does to me is all of a sudden we've gone from a state of I can't achieve my goal to, okay, this has happened. Let's set a new one, which is 300. Take those other things out of it for now and just focus on rehabilitating, etc. 
focus on the 300 and then get this other program happening at the same time. And all of a sudden, I've gone from being, oh, well, I'm not really aiming for anything with my workout because I'm not going to get to 600. So therefore, I'm also, even though I'm training legs, I'm not focused on the legs because I'm thinking, well, I can't get to the 600. So, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. So for me, it has made a massive difference just within 24 hours. And I, I'm like, this provides me some more hunger because I can, I can ease the pressure on myself by taking those other things out. I'm going to put some more pressure on myself with this other program, which um, I'll tell you more about that tomorrow, perhaps. Um, and so I'm going to combine this other abdominal and cardio program with my legs and rehab and focus on that for at least the next six weeks. But the, um, the legs can continue on. I mean, I can continue on to the, the 300 until I get there and then look at, okay, do we go beyond that? How are the knees holding up? Is it a long-term sustainable plan for me to be lifting heavy weights and putting that, that extra load on my knees or I just back, and back it off and, and do more repetitions and uh, focus more on functionality at that point? But for right now, I'm focusing on the 300. So what it did for me is really lit a fire, a lit a fire under me to say, wow, this is exciting. This creates focus. And all I've done is tweaked it slightly, just a slight mind shift. So this morning, uh, I was really energized this morning. And so I got up at 20 past four, the alarm went off. And I thought, you know what, I could lie here for another hour, I could keep hitting snooze or whatever. I said, no, I'm gonna get up because I'm feeling really fired up today as to what I wanna get done. So I got up and um, had brekkie, um, pretty early, uh, which I drank at my desk. It was my smoothie. And uh, I got stuck into work and I wrote an article. I did a post today about Jason Alexander and, and meeting him uh, over in LA. And that was really exciting. Was, I was such a Seinfeld fan. And uh, then, I'd, actually, I'll come back to the Jason Alexander bit at the end. Um, and then I, I worked on some, some other bits, some social, other, um, social media stuff. And then I decided that, you know what? I've got about an hour right now where I can do a workout. Now, I trained legs yesterday in my studio, uh, but I thought I didn't do leg press because I wanted to use the leg press machine at the, at the gym. And I find that I'm more motivated to train legs heavy when there's more activity around me, you know, whether somebody doing a leg press next to me or there's you know, just more activity around. Uh, so I, I went to the gym and I thought, well, maybe I'll have time for some abs or maybe not. We'll just see how we go with the leg press because I do like eight, nine sets on the, the leg press uh, because I you know, slowly build up, slowly build up. And I started out and the, the left knee, which is the one that I have a, a bit of a tracking issue with, uh, was starting to play up a little bit. Like I warm up on 120 kilos and uh, you know, just I add an extra 20 kilos each time. So it takes a while to get up to, to 240, which is the weight that I have been doing. And after I'd done the first three sets or so, the knee started to come good. I wasn't feeling any pain. So I was, uh, I was feeling good for the, for the workout. And I thought, okay, well, keep going, keep going. And so I got up to 240 kilos. And normally I do four rep uh, sorry, two repetitions on 240 and then go for 245, which I have uh, failed to do over the last uh, number of weeks. And quite badly too, I'll say, I, have, I just haven't, haven't been able to budget. The, the, uh, the weight comes down and just does not go back up again. Uh, so um, I had that in the back of my mind, of course. Fail, 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 fail. But I was feeling good today. Um, so I got up to 240 and I did my two reps. And I thought, actually, you know what? This is feeling easy. Uh, and so I did two more, so I did four. So I thought, okay. So I recorded a little video. I haven't posted them yet, but um, they'll be posted shortly. Um, so I thought, right, I thought about going straight to 250. I thought, no, go up in five kilo increments because you haven't done 245 before. Uh, so I loaded 245 on, and I have about a minute, a minute to 90 seconds um, rest between each set. 
And so I got in there and went through my little routine that I go through, slapping the legs and getting the mind in the right position. And as I was sitting there, before I was doing it, I'm like, do you know what? I can see this thing going up. I can see the plate coming down and I can see it going back up. I feel strong because the previous set felt a lot easier than it normally does. It felt really good and I'm feeling really strong. So I thought, you've got this. I know you can do it. I can visualize the weight coming down and me powering up through my heels to get it back up. So I lift it off the 245. It comes down and it goes up with ease, it seems. I mean, it's still hard, but uh, it, it wasn't going to stop. I did four reps on 245. Now, what's the difference between this week and all the other weeks that I've tried it? Mindset. My mindset said that, you know what? You can do this. And in the other weeks, I'm sure I've said, come on, you can do this. But I don't think I really believed it. And, you know, I can remember where I've done sets like last week. The weight's coming down. I've lifted 245 off. The weight's coming down. And as it's coming down, I'm like, this feels heavy. This feels heavy. This feels heavy. Comes the point of, you know, touching the bottom and going back up to the top. And it's like, it's not going. It's not going. It's not going. So it doesn't go. Um, And that negative uh, message that you send yourself is just toxic. And so you've already talked yourself out of it before you've really lifted it. But today I said, I'm not doing that. I feel strong. I know this is going up and bang, it went up. So I climbed out, stretched, put on 250. Now I've never done 250. And I was prepared to stop at 245. But I thought, you know what? I feel good. But I was uh, now starting to get under a bit of time pressure to get back home uh, in time and, and get ready uh, for some, some clients. And so I load 250 on, jump in, go through the same routine. I film a little video of this one too. And boom, four reps, 250. It's like, wow, what a massive difference a week can make and what a huge difference your mindset can have on you. So it got me thinking on the way home. So my legs feel pretty good right now. Like it's now, uh, gee, like 10 hours after I've done that. It's been a long day up to now. I've been up for... Uh, a long time. It's been a productive day though and had some fun with the kids in the process. Uh, but what it, th- it got me thinking was how many people uh, just approach their workouts with no hunger? And again, I think the, probably the other difference with the other weeks is, is my focus, my goal. So worst case, it becomes road to 300, okay? I road to 300, so I'm 50 kilos off road to 300. Now, if I had have had longer, I would have kept going. I would have done another, maybe gone up to 260. Um, we're in two more sets after that because I was feeling really strong. I was feeling really good. Uh, so I'm 50 kilos away from it, the closest I've ever been. And I think the power of my mind overnight with knowing that I'm excited about doing this new program and knowing that I can still achieve my goal for my legs, even though I can't do uh, you know, my, back and my, um, my back and my chest. And I was like, oh, I'm okay with that if that's the way that it has to be. I need to let my body repair. But the, the change in me overnight just from that one little thing and then you know, having this other program as well, which is something that I can focus on, is like, wow, that's created so much more energy and focus for me and with the, the food as well I'm like I'm focused on my food all the time but it's just that extra attention to detail so like what I was talking about yesterday with those percent, those one percentage differences that uh, the British cycling team and sky racing were were uh, employing in their their tactics and their equipment and mindset and everything with their um, athletes and the, the equipment and um, trainers and everything and just that slight, slight change there can make an incredible difference to you. So, you know, what are you missing out on here? What are you not doing? What are you not focusing on? Now, I've talk, I talk about goals and, and so forth all the time. You can see how these things link together. 
I mean, the, the highest performing people on the planet, whether they be business people, sports people, scientists, artists, whatever, you know, they have this hunger within them. They have this desire to succeed. They have these strong goals that they can envisage in their mind. Like again, I love the, I'm talking about Walt Disney and the incredible vision that he had that no one else could see. No one else could see it. And yet that vision has allowed billions of people around the planet to be entertained from this one man's mission and vision to create a place where families could come and have fun and relax and enjoy uh, you know, a beautiful theme park. Uh, so I, I think it would be fair to say that everybody listening to this, including myself, can do much better in terms of our focus and our mindset to anything that we want to do in our life. Whether it be uh, something that you want in a relationship, or let me talk about that for a second. So for many, many decades, or oh, years, a few decades, I was thinking that I would never be able to find somebody in my life that would love me uh, like, like an intimate partner. Um, I had such a, a weak self-image and self-esteem of myself uh, that, that's really quite sad. And I look back at it and I think, wow, how did that manifest itself? And, you know, where, where did mum and dad go wrong for me to feel that way? Like, how did I not have... Uh, uh, that sense of confidence in me. Now from me, and I say mum and dad there, because I think, well, hopefully I'm doing the right thing to put my children in, in the right place. But I guess uh, maybe it's a little bit like people say, oh, you're a great singer, you're a great singer. And, uh, you know, oh, we love you, it doesn't matter, and all that kind of stuff, when the reality is you completely suck and uh, no one's prepared to tell you the truth. I mean, my reality was I was a tiny, a tiny little boy and everybody else was much bigger than me and that made me feel inferior and uh, it made me feel that I would never find a girl that was shorter than me because I was never going to be very tall and certainly in high school uh, I didn't and therefore I had no, no self-confidence. I didn't know how to talk to, to people, I didn't know how to communicate. Um, but then the time came where I had changed my body through going to the gyms. Again, very focused on what I wanted to do. I was absolutely determined to put on 10 kilos within 10 weeks, uh, which is what I did. And that's when uh, the life changes started to happen for me. And uh, since then, obviously, I've worked uh, a lot on myself. And now I work on myself every day. I just wish I discovered what I'm doing now in terms of the work that I do on myself and how I communicate at like 30 years ago so that I could uh, become an even greater version of myself. The things that I'm doing now I could have done, uh, you know, years ago. But, you know, that's life's journey. And I think the pain that I've gone through to get to where I am has created a successful mindset for me and to appreciate it more. Uh, so, uh, you know, there, there are so many different aspects of your life where you could have that focus and energy. And right now, I have uh, incredible focus on my relationship and uh, wanting to make that grow even deeper. And my mate, Dr. Phil, is even helping me out there. Uh, so uh, he's got a great program uh, called Relationship Rescue. And I think it's, um, it's, a, it's an incredible program. I've, I, I really love the work of Dr. Phil. It really resonates with me. And uh, I think everybody could do with some of his work. I mean, it's a great book if you want to grab it, Relationship Rescue. And uh, you really need to do all the work up to Chapter 8. But uh, Chapter 8 is then a 14-day reconne reconnection uh, process that you do with your partner. And I tell you, it doesn't matter what state your relationship is in, if you do all the work and you do the 14-day reconnection program, 
I, I don't see how you could not uh, come back fully reconnected with your partner if you do it, uh, you know, with your true heart. Uh, so, you know, that and dust with focus, that comes. I mean, we become complacent with everything that we do. Like our relationships become very complacent. And uh, like at the time of recording this, the kids are just having a bit of fun. And uh, I said, I'll come and record this. Uh, but, you know, life gets in the way. And it's a case of you focus on the transactions that have to be performed in a relationship. So like your housework and the chores and the bills and taking kids to cheer practice or basketball, football, uh, you know, whatever it is. And you get caught up in those things as opposed to, you know, the transformational things, like focusing on, so what, what can we do for each other? What can we do for the children to help uh, them develop their little minds and, and worlds? Um, you know, it's easy to fall into that, uh, funk, I suppose. And that's what happens with uh, your work as well. I mean, so many people, I think it's like 80% or 78, 80 to 85% of people don't like their jobs and yet continue to go to them. Now, I, I think there's an element in there of people just not, not digging deep enough within themselves to get a greater outcome from their work. But uh, people also just and chase the money and say, oh, well, this, is, this pays well or it pays the bills and uh, you keep going through it. I mean, imagine what sort of world we would live in where every single person or even take the 1%, if an extra 1% of the world's population uh, all of a sudden was working in the jobs that they absolutely have 100% passion and hunger to succeed in, imagine what the world would look like then imagine if that was 10%, 20%, 100%. I mean, we would have the most amazing uh, movies, the most amazing books, the most amazing technology, the most amazing relationships, um, the most amazing opportunities that exist that have never existed before because everybody is living their true purpose and their passion and everything else becomes abundant. I mean, that's... That's what's available to you. And with your health, as I started with this podcast, the, the focus on your health, uh, again, people become complacent. Uh, so I was working with a client this morning and uh, she was telling me how her, her mum walks 10 kilometres a day and she was saying that, well, that's just not possible for her because, yeah, she does do four hours of travelling to the city and she does walking and so forth with her dog at night time. She goes out for a walk at lunchtime. She's like walking from the train station back to the train station and stuff. I'm not quite sure how many steps she's going, but she said, I, there's, I just, it's not possible for me to do 10, um, 10 kilometers of walking. I was like, well, that's such a limiting belief. Uh, you could, if she's leaving at you know, 5 a.m. or something in the morning, um, then yes, I understand that she may not be able to get out at night, uh, uh, sorry, in the morning because it's dark and she feels unsafe. Uh, but uh, there, there are ways of doing it. I mean, she takes her dog for a walk, takes the dog for a longer walk, uh, you know, work, walk more at lunch, park the car further away from the train station and walk an extra kilometre each way. Uh, there's two kilometres right there a day. Uh, you know, get, on to, get off at a different station and walk an extra couple of kilometres. So there's, you know, there's four or five kilometres right there. Uh, so it, it's just a limiting mindset that people can have. But if you're really focused on it and you said, well, I am going to absolutely achieve 10 kilometres every day, then you would. It's just that people don't want it badly enough. Their focus is not to want it badly enough. Uh, you know, my goals are, are so clear to me. Uh, the reasons why I want to do them are so clear to me. And I'm certainly an individual that when those are lacking, as I just said about the, uh, the 245 kilos, it's been a failure and never achieved before for me. And today I've gone two personal bets, 245 and 250. And not just on one rep, but I've done it on multiple reps as well. Uh, so the mind is our most powerful 
tool that we have and you're underutilizing it, I want you to start driving your focus and your mindset harder. Stop being lazy. Create some focus, create some goals, write them down, focus on them specifically for your health and fitness. But once you start doing that for your health and fitness, you will find that it will naturally spread to other areas of your life. Because I guarantee you this, you can't be successful, like super successful in your health and fitness and not have that spill over. You can't be, you know, like a, a slob at home or a, you know, horrible in your relationship and stuff if you are absolutely where you want to be with your health and fitness. Uh, because there's something that just won't gel there. And because you've been successful in this one area of your life, you'll be like, okay, I now want to get that to move over into this next part of my life, whether it's spiritual, whether it's uh, financial, whether it's relationships, uh, whether it's your career, you know, whatever it is that you'll just want to naturally do that. And I think that's beautiful. So that's my message today. Focus. Get that hunger back in your belly. And it's winter, but look, I've said to you before, winter is often the best time that I find to train. And today proved it's freezing and I achieve two personal bests. You go and do your personal best and I'll talk to you tomorrow.